The battle to bring high-speed broadband internet service to even the smallest towns continues. Lately, it's been complicated by financial problems for Axia, the middle mile service provider. Berkshire Eagle reporter Larry Parnas has been covering this story in depth, and Larry came in to tell us more. It's a fiber optic backbone that reaches through 50 plus communities and uh, was the fruit of a successful stimulus grant that the state landed, sharing the cost with the federal government, about $90 million altogether. And it's this uh, ring of, uh, of cable that uh, connects community institutions to the backbone to the internet and was designed to be a uh, sort of a, a leaping off point for last mile connections. Which gets it into homes, small businesses, yep. people like you and me. Yep. <clears throat> yep. Okay. So the middle mile network operator, officially it's KCST USA Inc., better known really by its parent corporation, I think Axia, formerly officially the owner, if you will, they declared bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. Second time that it happened, they, they say their debts and their liabilities far outweigh the assets they have. They say they didn't get the uh, community anchor institutions that they expected to get, so they're earning about half what they thought they would on this. You've pointed out that this going into federal bankruptcy court has really opened up, and I, I think the wording when we emailed back and forth, you said it's, it's an open and unusual window into what's going wrong here. Well, that's always the case with, uh, with litigation. Uh, and interestingly, even as uh, the Massachusetts Broadband Institute would like to preserve public confidence in the viability of the middle mile, uh, their lawyers in, uh, in U.S. District Court, because this proceeds in two federal court venues, uh, are sort of claiming that the sky is falling if they can't secure Axie's continued uh, performance of its, of its contract. So uh, just... Uh, recently, the federal, a federal judge um, put a temporary restraining order in place compelling Axie to keep running this thing, and then that was just renewed through May 18th. So in terms of uh, the operation of the, of the functions that the Middle Mile provides, which, as you know, are really central, it's uh, fire and police con connections to the Internet, libraries, schools, it's really pretty critical, uh, aside from the failure to yet reach most of these last mile premises and businesses, it is functioning and has since 2014 as the, as the way that these public institutions, including uh, these public safety performance uh, systems, are functioning. You also pointed out, you said, you know, you're discovering an interesting difference in terms of philosophy and, and practicality in terms of whether the network, the fiber network is privately or publicly owned and maintained. That's something MBI really was worried about dealing with people wired west, mm -hmm. the last mile connection going right into homes. Uh, that, that caused a very sudden kind of break there a, a few months back. Mass Broadband Institute, MBI, Mass Tech Collaborative, which kind of oversees them. And of course, after a while you get this alphabet soup kind of swimming in your head yeah. about it all. But you say MBI really is probably more favoring private control, if I read you right, than having it publicly maintained in some way. Jim, I think they would say that they, uh, they have no one-size-fits-all, and uh, truly, uh, they do have these various options in front of the towns. Uh, they have a liaison who is working one-on-one -on -one with the towns, uh, Bill Ennen, and, of course, Peter Larkin, former state rep from the Berkshires, is now the chair of the MBI board, and he's the special advisor on this. Um, but, yes, I think I've heard repeatedly from MBI and Mass Tech officials that the, uh, the agreements that they're working out with, the, with private companies, particularly Comcast and Charter, to extend their privately owned networks, um, they think are the best deal. They keep saying it's free meaning that the towns don't have to invest taxpayer money in it. But there are at maybe um, 15 to 20 towns that, despite this free offer, are pursuing the idea that this should be municipally owned, um, and it should also have been, you know, hearkening back to the Wired West idea of, of a regional system, uh, that there should be regional networks that can back each other up on redundancy and that could be run and that... Um, 
that it, that if they pay their costs, there'd be a dividend back to the uh, to the customers of the system. So just as this, uh, you know, towns are good at building things. Thanks for the great reporting you're doing on this. We're going to oh, keep thanks. reading. Thanks for coming in. My pleasure.